if someone were to be walking by my shop right now, they would probably be wondering to themselves, what is all that banging going on inside of that shop? Well, I want to show you a technique that I use um, that distresses wood. It basically takes nice smooth wood and distresses it to make it look old and rough hand hewn. So a question might occur here, um, depending on your woodworking preferences, uh, what you think defines beauty in a piece of furniture, is why would you take something smooth and make it look rough and old and give it this rustic look? But the in thing right now is actually slab furniture, rough looking, um, rustic. Um, just go on a, a shop like Etsy at some point and go look in the shop on there and just look up things like rustic signs, rustic this, just put that word rustic in there and you'll see the people that have shops selling this stuff are just selling it hand over fist. Um, and so I have a customer here that I've designed a piece of furniture for and they really wanted uh, the base of this table to have this really nice um, hand hewn look to it and not to look totally disgusting and rough but to be a nice hand hewn looking beams throughout the entire process. So obviously I'm a sawmill owner, I could pretty easily cut the 8x8s and the 10x10s and the 6x6s and whatever beam size that I want to use I could easily cut on my mill. But then of course you have to go through the process because it is going in a home, you want it to be dry. And so it would take almost forever, even in a kiln setting, to take an 8x8 post and put it in there and dry it out enough. And then it would be really cracked. Um, in this case I'm using some ash that I had left over from my neighbor's yard that I cut last year, I had a kiln dried. I'm going to show you in a minute here the process that I use to make the beams. But the tool that I am using is a peculiar tool that some of you might have never heard of. It's called an adze. It's an axe with a curved end on it and the handle is curved so that it ergonomically fits in your hand. And the swinging motion with an axe like this is not like a normal axe where you're going just straight up and down. With this one you actually when you swing you have to actually curve the axe so that it makes the, the, sweep, the sweeping cut so that it makes fine shavings like this. So what I want to show you right now is how I made these beams. Now this is the most structurally solid way that I could think to build them and the most uh, material saving way that I could think to build them. Now this is one of the 8x8 posts that is going to be the center support for the base of the table and my good old friend the miter fold joint now, I've used this construction in the past. If you've seen some of my previous videos, basically what you do is you miter all four sides to make the box. And then I use domino joints, and you can see those here uh, inside of that miter. They're both mitered and dominoed and glued together. So that makes for a very, very solid construction. This will never come apart. And I'll tell you one of the other big advantages of doing it this way is if I want to take a beam and I want that beam to be six or seven or eight feet long um, especially with something solid like ash I'm using solid wood through the whole construction with that miter fold joint it forms a box structure and so it's very very rigid all the way across you might have heard before a torsion box where you basically have a top and a bottom and then you have pieces in the middle of that uh, which forms almost not necessarily a honeycomb pattern but um, basically a rigid structure that's um, not flexible and so with this process I can make very long beams that will be very stable and the best part is over time they're not going to want to twist they're not going to want to bend and they're going to hold their shape so when I build this piece of furniture I can be assured that for generations to come it's going to last when I take a log in somebody's yard and I'm examining uh, how we're going to build a piece of furniture for them in my mind I'm always thinking about the process of longevity in this piece of furniture we want to build something that's going to last for a long time not something that's just going to fall apart so all the joinery, all the construction methods are taken into account with that and at the same time normally uh, because I am working with customers wood I have minimal materials I don't have like an extra hundred board feet or two hundred board feet to work with um, like you would in a typical shop setting where you have you know bundles of lumber to work with and you can pick and choose I need to be safe uh, I need to be material saving and my process so that's one of the reasons that I did this Now I'm going to show you this process of using this ads. Now there's a few tools that you're going to need in order to do this rough hewn process. First one I already showed you is the ads axe. I'll try to put a link in the description there below um, of some sources where you can find these. Now this is just a short handheld one. They also make these with longer handles um, where you would where you could either stand further away or stand up high 
you could swing the axe down with a longer handle. Uh, this just happens to be the one that I have. Uh, most importantly, as with all tools, it needs to be razor sharp. If it's not super sharp, obviously you don't get clean cuts. You won't get the results you want. It'll be constant tear out. Now, this is so sharp, I'm going to show you that what I'm working on right here is kiln dried ash. Okay, so uh, ash is known as uh, one of those woods that just happens to dull tools. And I sharpened this one time and I've been able to do almost all four sides of the beam with it. All right, the second tool that you're going to need is some kind of a light that you can shine across the material. I have this awesome uh, DeWalt light that I just got. It runs off of a standard 20 volt battery. It's got three super bright LEDs and a red LED in there that uh, is pretty neat. And so you need something to shine across the material so you can see how the tool is striking and you can see if the hand tuning process that you're trying to make uh, the appearance look like that it actually does have the appearance that you want it to look like, if that sentence made any sense. All right, water. <laughs> Uh, it is obviously laborious to do something like this, and so you may get worn out. There are times when your hand might actually seize around the axe if you're gripping too tight and you're constantly trying to swing. Um, and so, you know, obviously water is a good one. And a glove. When I first started doing this process, you can see my hand got a big blister on it, and I realized after that that it might be a good idea to wear a glove. So that's about all that you really need to do this. It's a very simple process. It is time consuming. It is laborious, um, but well worth it. You get a really cool result when it's all done. Well, let's do some axe swinging and see what we can produce. So while I'm swinging this axe, this adds, one thing that is important with any tool, whether it's a wood turning tool or an axe or a modified axe like this adds, is to make sure that you understand where the bevel of the angle of your tool is located so that when you approach the wood, you're getting the optimal angle for cutting. So if I were to go straight down with this thing, I'm going to put a big round dent on the top of this wood. Likewise, if I'm approaching too shallow of an angle, the tool will just skip off and it won't make any cut at all. And so um, it really is a monotonous chore, but it is a skill that is worth learning. Um, they do make certain shapers, really expensive shapers, that will put a rough hewn look into a board, but it is still not hand hewn looking. As with any trade or skill set that a person learns or develops, and this is probably one of the rarer ones that most people will not attempt, <laughs> probably for good reason, <laughs> is that, uh, you know, anything that seems monotonous and boring, like a guy sitting here looking like he's hacking at a piece of wood for hours, um, it looks rather boring and monotonous, but really every single strike every single swing of the axe takes care, it takes attention, and to do something like this takes dedication in order to pull off the project. And so the question is, when you approach your work, do you approach your work with the mentality that you are learning and developing a skill, or do you see certain things as just a form of monotony to get through? Every process in the world of woodworking is a process to learn and develop and get better and better at your skill. There is no end game to it. One day you wake up and you say, hey, I'm pretty good at what I do all of a sudden. How did that happen? Well, it came from years of monotony. Um, and so keep that in mind when you're doing things like this or if you want to attempt something like this. Uh, developing the attention and the eye for detail to make something look so rough actually takes a fair amount of developed skill. So, I hope you appreciate that brief word of wisdom. I'm going to get back at it here. Oh yeah, living the dream. You know, one of the things that really fascinates me about the modern era of woodworking that we're in right now is how things that really look rough are popular. Um, 
you know, we, we always go through trends and seasons of different styles and fashions. And sometimes the woodworker doesn't really get to pick and choose what he wants to make. Um, unless, of course, you are at the elite level and you can basically name your price and name your timelines. Um, the majority of us woodworkers uh, make what is within customer demand. <laughs> it's not until you get into the upper echelon of artistic value where people more or less will commission you for a project without having any idea what it might look like. Um, but the majority of us in the population don't live there, <laughs> unfortunately, right? So what's interesting about this is how you take so much time actually going through the process uh, of joining wood, of planing wood, of sanding wood, of mitering wood, of gluing wood, and trying to make everything look smooth. And that alone has value in it, just the, the labor of doing that and the time, just getting it to a smooth process, but then we actually add value by making it look rougher. And so, again, it's sort of the supply and demand mentality. I hope that this video has helped you in some way um, see another method or another process of doing something that might help you increase value in your project. Um, and this method, of course, can be applied to just about anything. It doesn't have to be a table structure. It could be just about anything that you want to look rough, you know. I am going to be doing a follow-up with this video so that you can see the finishing process. And I'm going to take this even a step further to make it look older. I'm not just going to clear coat the ash or just leave it plain wood. We're actually going to be staining it uh, a black color, which will end up giving it a gray and black color, and then giving it a, a matte clear finish to finish it out. And I'll do a follow-up video showing how I do that, and you'll get to see the final uh, effect, the final look of what it is that I'm making here. If you have any questions, comments, frustrations, or anxieties that you would like to put into this video, uh, please put it in the comments section below. Comments help drive the channel, and they also help produce more revenue on the channel so that I can keep going and have more initiative to keep making helpful videos for you. Some of you out there are just overwhelmingly positive with your comments, and uh, again, I do really appreciate that. Alright guys, thanks. Have a good day.